Want to know how I fight the walls of existential dread just slowly collapsing upon me? Answer is easy, my friends. I make little guys. And it's been, uh, it's been quite a while since I've made a little guy. <laughs> so my mental health, well, it just demands it of me. This week, we're gonna take it easy, get cozy, have some fun, make a new addition to my collection, my ever-growing, slightly concerning collection of little guys. You ready? So this week, we are going to make little flying appa out of wool so that he can hang on my ceiling, just fill me with so much serotonin every time I look at him. I've been wanting to do this for a few years, but I felt like maybe it wasn't relevant enough which is dumb. Now that the new Avatar TV series has just come out, opinions on that show are quite volatile. I liked it. <laughs> but I will say, Appa in that show, what did they do to my boy? They made Appa ugly. So anyways, here we are. In case you're wondering uh, the status of the cleanup from the last video, to my left, there still sits 100 pounds of play sand. And if you're wondering to yourself, I wonder if she wants to talk about it. No, I don't. I would very much like this adorable flying appa to go here. Wow. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it quite yet, but I would imagine that I can hang him on some fishing line, put ceiling hooks up, just kind of suspend him so that he's just hanging out here looking like he's mid-flight. What do us maximalists do when we've covered all of our wall space and floor space with stuff? We take to the skies. So we've got the idea, we've got the location. Let's talk materials. Behold, my box of tricks. And by tricks, I mean the shaved off hair of sheep's unknown. All of my wool here, wool pad to stab upon. A bunch of needles to do the stabbing. Breaking this project down into shapes. His body is one oval. His head, six legs, three little toes on them. Beaver-esque tail. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be a relatively simple project. Mm, I do have more wool coming in the mail. Should get here tomorrow morning because I am actually losing my mind where if I think I ordered something, apparently I didn't. Even though I can specifically remember placing the order, it just disappeared. Aside from the fact that I'm losing my marbles at the grand old age of 31, shouldn't be too difficult. Hopefully we can finish it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, this video is sponsored. So to build a blanket for it and to talk a little bit about that is sponsor Rachel. You wanna see this cool bug I found? You wanna stay up late and talk about rocks? Do you wanna braid our hair and pretend we're elves? Yep. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Brooklinen. If you've never heard of Brooklinen, it is a luxury sheet company. I've been using Brooklinen sheets for quite a while now. I never used to be like a nice sheets girl. I'm realizing it's a form of self-care to buy yourself things that are gonna last you. These sheets are definitely that. They feel like fancy hotel sheets. Frodo is a digger. No joke, he has ripped through some of the cheaper sheets that we've gotten, so. <laughs> The 270 thread count makes them very light and breathable and perfect for hot sleepers, which I am. <laughs> Another nice thing about them is that instead of just purchasing everything individually, what you can do is you can do the bundle. I went ahead and I got the classic hardcore sheet bundle, which includes a core sheet set, which is the fitted sheet and the normal sheet, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. Not only can you save 20% by choosing the bundle, but it's also super customizable. You can choose from over 20 different patterns and colors and mix and match. For the sheets and some of the pillowcases, I got this really stinking cute seasonal color. For the duvet cover and the other pillowcases, I grabbed a more neutral green. And right now, Brooklinen is having their sleep week sale. You can get 20% off site-wide and 40% off of bundles. So if you wanna hop over before it ends on March 20th, you can head over to the link in my description. Yoink. Thank you so much, Brooklinen, for sponsoring this video. I'm sorry, am I boring you? And without further ado, let's get back to it. Before we get started, of course, it is time to don thy finger armor to protect against any stray needles and also so that thy fingers are ready for the joust, my liege. I feel like the beginning is always a little stressful because you have to really figure out the scale. Sort of connect this into a bundle. A beautiful bouncing baby boy. Careful not to stab ourself. Stabbing yourself with a needle that is barbed. It's not an activity that I recommend. 
<laughs> I apologize if you can hear all of the chaos that is the barn battening down the hatches. To quote the ancient scripture, it's freaking whimdy. This is super exciting stuff. Weird egg. I wanna cover it in this. Usually it's as easy as putting a layer of this wool on top and then just stabbing it into the base layer, but for some reason this was fighting me and was not sticking. And so I got big mad, tore it apart, made a quick lackluster skeleton out of wire, band name called it, wrapped that base wool very, very tightly around it and just kept wrapping and wrapping until I was able to bulk up the base of the body. Look upon my beautiful child. That <laughs> took forever. So mentally taxing. And I had about maybe like three separate hissy fits. I broke so many needles. A furry little lima bean. Appa is pretty shapeless when it comes to his body adi adi. It's still a little squishy. I don't feel great about the security of this. Thankfully, it's just going to be hanging from the ceiling. It should hold its structural integrity. It's pretty amazing how fast the maternal instincts kick in. This is my boy, my son. Since that took about 15 times longer than I thought it was going to, Let's continue, shall we? My goal for the rest of the day was to make the bases of the legs and the head. So I whipped up a quick Kraft macaroni and cheese looking version of the leg and repeated the process until I had five more. And because Appa has a big old noggin, I kind of just wrapped every scrap piece of wool I had together until we had a rough shape for his head. Once all the base stuff was done, I called it quits for the day and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Uh, we have to get this done today. I have once again put myself in quite the predicament. To mark the occasion today, I would dress in avatar and colors. Except I'm not the avatar. I'm Chris. Here he is. <laughs> My monstrosity. Onto the lima bean, I did actually add more shape. I realized when looking at pictures of Appa that he has uh, essentially the humpback that I'm gonna have when I'm 75 years old from my atrocious posture. He's more shaped correctly now, sort of. So he's gonna kind of look like that. And then legs and a tail. I made him so big. What is wrong with me? The wool that I was waiting for did come in. Lots of this cream color. This pack of earth tones, which is nice because I can use that for his face. At this point, this project is just... <laughs> My brain is a card of cabbages and this project is any obstacle <laughs> at all. I want to cover all the stuff with the cream wool that I have to do. Started on his face and his legs. I definitely need to make them beefier. His legs are not this dinky. And then I want to sculpt his horns and his nose, put the final coloring on his back, like his arrows and such. That's all she wrote. You think we can do it? I don't know. One day, one day I'll choose an actually simple project. Until then, <laughs> let's get started. Oh God. So I started off by covering the body in this new wool. When working with large surface areas, I like to go in kind of a grid. It helps me kind of organize where I have stabbed and where I have not yet stabbed. Speaking of all the stabbing, I decided I needed to put my Moita podcast on. And I basically accidentally gave him a mullet. Then I could start refining his face, so I grabbed colors that I felt like matched as best I could. I wasn't crazy about this gray, but you'll see how I solved that in a little bit. I added a really thin layer of this light brown onto his little cheeks. This isn't exactly his colors, but it's okay. I still think it looks cute. the ears I basically needed it to be a flat surface so I stiffened out the shape that I wanted on one side flipped it over and did the same thing on the other side and essentially you just keep doing this and keep forming it into an ear shape until you get it how you like it and then I was able to add the under color with that light brown <laughs> Now it's time to beef it up. 
To do this, I literally wrapped all these skinny legs in a bunch of wool, making them look like a delicious croissant, and then I just attached all the hair. Leaving these big tufts of fur at the top, those will be important later, you shall see. Kept going until I had what looked like the weirdest litter of puppies I've ever seen. You know, I've never been a big tea drinker. I don't know why, huh? <laughs> Listen, I've tried to be that big. But it's just not in me. But you know what? I feel like this occasion, Uncle Iroh would implore me to try. So, I honestly don't know if dunking it in and out like this does anything for the steeping process, but it feels good to participate in something. I am taking a break from stabbing because my arm feels like I just went to the gym, which is a complete assumption because I've never actually been to one. But what I would imagine trying to get swole feels like. So let's make some stuff out of clay. I've got my boy. I made these little wire shapes so I can put the horns right on that. I basically just have to do his horns and his nose. Small little bulbs for his eyes because I want his eyes to be a little glossy. Donk, donk, donk. Mm, a tea connoisseur. That's hot water with a little bit of flavor. <laughs> Got my polymer clay. Stiff. <laughs> Is there a way to soften polymer clay? Polymer clay. Smash and soften. Two, use a conditioning machine. Three, mix it with a clay softener. Four, combine with softer clay. And five, use a food processor. Well, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> Hand sweat and gumption. Yeah. These sculpts were very basic, especially the horns. I just wrapped the clay around the shape that I already made with the wire on lemon juice, baby. While that was baking, I decided to pull off an experiment that I had been seeing. A very scientific explanation is you pretend to fall asleep with cheese in your hand and see what your dog does. And it turns out I have a very patient good boy. <laughs> Even with some added theatrics on my part, I think maybe he's just smart enough to know I wasn't sleeping, but you know what? I'm just gonna say he's a really good boy. Good boy. <laughs> mm, delicious. Paint job was very, very simple. I just painted the horns gray and the nose and the eyes black. Also added a gloss coat to the nose and the eyes too. All right, time for feet, which in any other instant, I would say, no, thank you. If we look at Appa's little peats, I must look at the beans for research. Also, if you're one of those people who can't stand when others say toe beans, how does it feel? How does it feel to go through life without that extra sense of whimsy? And look at the toe beans and the peats. He's got some weird feet. Sorry, Appa, I don't mean to shame you, but what the f Dark brown toes, which are a bit crescent roll-ish and make me just a little bit uncomfortable. Even darker brown toe beans. And they're a weird shape. They almost are a bit Doc Ock-ish. I'm just gonna make a, th a three bean medley here. <laughs> Probably mix brown with black because I don't have like a really dark brown. <laughs> Make sort of a flat surface. Start to form the toes a little. Yeah, cute. All right, flip it over. I'm starting to feel a little less stressed about this project. I can see the vision. Can you poke it in so there's definition in between the toes? It's happening. Top pad base. Admittedly, that the smaller details are much more fun to do, which is why most people will do small wool creations. <sighs> Get some toe beans. And you know what? I have not stabbed myself yet, which for me is very surprising. Ah! Frick. Ow! 
Oh, oh no. As I was saying that I haven't stabbed myself yet, I thought how stupid of a bit would it be if I said that and then I actually stabbed myself. God, and the universe said, bet. Right in the fingernail. My favorite spot to be stabbed. Beans, let's attach it to one of the feet. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> now I only have to do five more. Tally ho. After that, it was time to work on the tail, which I just basically did the same method of the ear, except just giant. Papa, assemble! All right, let's freaking do it. One, two, three. Break! Assembling was a lot easier than I thought it would be because I left these tufts of fur at the top of the legs I was able to just kind of blend them in with the body. The security isn't great You could still rip these off if you really wanted to but you know, finally I was starting to see my boy come together <laughs> Oh, he's so cute And horrifying kind of <laughs> Then I put the tail on, which added some volume at the back, which is good because if Appa has anything, it's thick cheeks. Attached underneath for extra security and oh my God, this looked so inappropriate. Finally, it was time to put his little noggin on. At this point, something deep within me urged me to listen to the Labyrinth soundtrack and it was the best decision that I could have made. He is baby sized. Holy sh What have I done? He's huge. Well, I'm going to try to airbrush his markings on because I don't have any more light brown. Very helpful marking diagram. Don't know if this is gonna work. My airbrush is a little flaky. 60% of the time, it works every time. Mm. Why are you not working? This is what I mean. Well, okay, never mind. First thing I need to do is figure out why this is not working. Problems that could have been solved maybe by me purchasing an actual airbrush and not one from US Cake Supply. But that's just a theory. Hey, hi, yeah, it's me. After trying to fix my airbrush, the metal nib flew off into what I can only describe as another dimension and I could not find it. So here we are. Thankfully, I did find this light brown wool in my stash. So I just made the markings with that, which was easy enough, but I'm still kind of mad about it. <sighs> After all his markings were done, I decided to put on the finishing touches, which apparently I wasn't recording when I put them on with hot glue. This project got a wee bit cursed towards the end, but it's okay because look at that little face. Finally, it came time to figure out how to suspend him from the ceiling and the reveal. Silly thing I did, but I love him so much. That's my boy. Did I make him absolutely ginormous, completely not on purpose in any way? Listen, who can say? Honestly, I don't, I, I guess I don't mind it because he kind of fills out this corner. What is home decor if it's not something that you can look at and just go, <laughs> every time I do my makeup, I'm gonna look up at him and I'm gonna smile. A mental health project. I've been having a rough month. You girl just needed to make something that was gonna bring me a dopamine hit. 
I could get nitpicky and say, you know, his legs are a little too long, but it kind of just looks like he's being like, held like this onto the ceiling and not necessarily mid-flight, but hey. <laughs> What I might do, maybe make like a couple clouds out of stuffing. I think that would be really cute and really extra. I am also a little concerned with how I am suspending him. Did not really think that part through. And what I should have done is integrated something into the skeletal structure. I made wire hooks and I, I tried to dig down with a needle and create kind of like a hole in his spine. Fill that with hot glue, stick the wire in. Seems to be holding just fine, but this wool is so soft that if you pull it apart, it's just gonna come apart. I'm worried over time, his big beefy cheeks are gonna weigh it down and slowly over time, I'll start to see the wool separate. So if any of you have suggestions on how I should tackle that, please, uh, may I have some advice? Digging down into this wool is like next to impossible. So I'm really not sure how I'm gonna do it. I might grab my needle and make his legs kind of more at an angle like that. like he's flying versus, like I said, being held like a disgruntled cat. Could I have just bought an oppa stuffed animal and suspended him on the ceiling? You. I don't know, just silly. That's it, hopefully you had fun on this journey. I don't know if people actually enjoy my little guy videos, but sometimes I need them for a little break. And this one ended up not being so much of a break, but you know what? This is worth every ding dang second of it. Once again, the sponsor of this video was Brooklyn, and so if you want to check out their sleep week sale, make sure you head to the link in my description. 20% off site-wide, 40% off of bundles until March 20th. That is it. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. Yip, yip. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Look at my stuff. Isn't it neat? I've been wanting to do the little head of it. Was this a lot of effort for a two second bit? Yeah. My fort. This is inefficient. You want to talk about mole people?